So in this video, I'm going to talk about generative AI security and discussing some of the framework and some of the early attempts I tried to uh, create for the security community. So let's dive in. The first framework I want to discuss about today is the OWASP LLM Top 10. The OWASP LLM Top 10 is an initiative where they are classifying 10 vulnerabilities or 10 kind of attacks attackers can use against LLM. And then it's an interesting framework because you have uh, some of the known attacks and some of the risk an LLM can be exposed or your AI system. So to name a few, we have the first one, prompt injections. Prompt injection is very famous. This is a way to bypass the security of an LLM system, uh, try to get the prompt system or something like that. We also have, for example, sensitive information disclosure when you have uh, an LLM that will give you access to some of the internal information of the organization from the AI system, for example. But it can also be, for example, supply chain vulnerabilities, training that data poisoning if you are using a model that has been poisoned uh, by someone malicious. So it's really interesting. I really recommend you to deep dive into all the 10 uh, vulnerability mentioned here. And the Gen AI security project at the OWASP is also leading several initiatives such as how to secure an agentic system, uh, how to understand how to exploit LLMs and doing some red teaming exercise. So this is a very interesting resource if you are trying to secure AI system today. The second framework I want to discuss about is the MITRE ATLAS matrix. So if you are familiar with the attack matrix, which is used to classify TTPs, tactic, technique, and procedure used by threat actors in your information uh, system, the Atlas matrix is kind of similar, except this is really focused on AI system, machine learning, LLM, and so on. So we have the similar mm -hmm. tactics such as reconnaissance, resource development, initial access, and so on. And for each of the tactics, you have the different techniques that could be used. To name a few, uh, we have, for example, um, publish poisoned uh, data sets. So that's uh, uh, something that could be used. Like for example, if an attacker craft a data set which is, which is directly uh, poisoned and you will reuse this data set to fine tune your own models, then you may end up with a compromised model, for example. Uh, there is also a prompt injection. We also uh, talk about prompt injection here for persistence. Uh, LLM plugin compromise, if you are using MCP, for example, or a tool to connect to your LLM or your agent. We also have privileged escalation with LLM jailbreak, for example, defense evasion, ev evade machine learning model, and so on. So that's a really interesting framework. Uh, even if it's not perfect, that's an early attempt to help you understand how threat actors or even your users are using LLM for malicious or adversarial goals. Which leads us to the next one, uh, LLM TTPs, which is a kind of an extension to the MITRE ATLAS matrix. So this one was created by Microsoft and OpenAI uh, uh, when they released in 2024 a report about uh, documenting about threat actors using OpenAI models for malicious goal or adversarial goal. And some of the classification here are really interesting. So we have LLM informed reconnaissance. This is how threat actors are leveraging LLM's models to gather intelligence or uh, get more information about the specific tech or, or looking for vulnerabilities, for example. We also have LLM aided developments used to create malware or create the development of tools. Of course, LLM for social engineering, we have plenty of use cases where, where we know uh, threat actors are leveraging LLMs for crafting uh, fake job opportunity or even scams or fake uh, phishing emails and so on. We also have LLM assisted vulnerability research. This one is really interesting. It demonstrates how attackers leverage AI system to find flaws and vulnerabilities into a software and system and so on. The Atlas matrix is very interesting and give you more information and more, de more details about how attackers can leverage AI system. The next one I want to discuss is indicator of prompt compromise. This is a term I coined uh, recently. And let me explain a little bit what I mean by that. So if you think about AI system today, prompts are central in every AI system or LLM use case and so on. 
So that means prompt can become something that we want to identify or to uh, block in some cases. So that's why I came up with the, with the term indicator of prompt compromise, because I think it's really important for us as uh, the, in the security community to understand that prompt can become a new kind of indicator of compromise in the future, uh, uh, even if it's potentially already the case. So what I mean by IOPC, indicator of prompt compromise, I define that as a pattern or artifact within prompts that could indicate potential exploitation, abuse or misuse of the model. This is not only trying to uh, do, for example, injection or jailbreak and so on. This can be used to detect any kind of patterns within a prompt. And the goal of IOPC is to facilitate to security team the identification of a attacks on AI model and the exploitation of their functionalities for adversarial purposes. So that's really important to keep that in mind and to understand. Indicator of, of prompt compromise have four subsets uh, because I think it's important to define what kind of prompt we want to identify and we can consider as uh, IOPC. So the first one, of course, is prompt manipulation, meaning injection, jailbreak, uh, adversarial token. That's how an attacker will try to manipulate the prompt to extra extract some information and so on. The second one, is, the second one is abusing legitimate functions, such as, for example, uh, LLM are, are good to generate code, uh, but this code can be used to generate malicious code or malware. So that's the kind of prompt we want to identify. Another example, LLM are good to generate uh, images uh, for a specific country or even for personalities. So it's really important uh, to understand that this kind of prompt can be used for influence in operations, misinformation, and even social engineering. So you have to find a way and uh, to have a way to identify this kind of patterns. The third one is reuse or suspicious prompt patterns. In some cases, you may see in your AI system multiple kind of patterns of similar prompts, and that could uh, indicate that an attacker is trying to exploit some feature of your AI system, and that's something you need to identify and to be able to detect as well. And the last one is abnormal or unexpected model output because a prompt is the input, but in some cases, the input can be very difficult to uh, detect or to identify as malicious patterns, but the output of your AI system can be harmful as well. So this is also something that you may need to understand and to detect proactively. That's it for this short video. I hope you find it interesting and it's, it gives you some additional information about general security. And I see you in the next one.